All right. How's it going, everyone? It's Austin and Cam here from AppSheet Training. We're glad everyone is able to join. We're going to be getting started probably in about 10 minutes, but we wanted to come on here a few minutes early just to welcome everyone. We've got some cool content coming um, for y'all today. Cam is one of our experienced developers here at um, Crew Technologies. Um, so we're just on here a little bit early to welcome everybody, see what everybody's up to. And I'll let Cam introduce himself too. Hey guys, um, I don't know if you see me right now on the webinar or not. Um, my name is Cameron Lupton. I've been a developer, consultant, training um, guy here at Crew Technologies and AppSheet Training for about four years, uh, 2018 of spring. So spring of 2018. So it's been quite a while and have been able to see a ton of different use cases from different angles. Uh, maybe as a development angle, maybe as a training angle, a consulting angle, but I've been able to see a ton of use cases and seeing tons of ways that AppSheet's been helpful to businesses and individuals. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Cam is really good at the graphic design portion of it. Um, and one of the cool things that Cam kind of puts into all of his apps is that graphic design. Um, I don't know. What, what would you call it, Cam? Like your, it's kind of your taste. Um, yeah. So ever since around sixth grade, mm -hmm. uh, about 10 years ago, no, like 12 years ago, I've been doing graphic design and yeah. I originally got hired onto Crew Technologies as a graphic designer. And so when I first got brought onto AppSheet, I'm probably in a situation very similar to a lot of you guys mm -hmm. where I don't have a development background, um, but I was able to come on as a developer when I was previously only had graphic design experience. And so even though we 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 run into situations where it sometimes feels as if app sheet is limiting when it comes to UX and UI design. Mm -hmm. However, you can get really creative on once you start understanding how the data manipulates the actual UI yeah. of app sheet. And so I think I have a very design first oriented um, development style. Yeah, And I think I, I tried to kind of push AppSheet further than it maybe is intended when it comes yeah. to UI elements. Mm -hmm. And so I love using stuff like a gallery icon view, but mm. also like doing that as a ref view instead yeah. of a detail view. And so like, have you ever seen those apps where there's like a little scrolling bar of like circle options at the bottom? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how to explain it entirely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you can throw in some really cool action buttons using um, using the gallery view as a reference view instead mm -hmm. of just using the, yeah, it, you can do a lot of cool stuff with AppSheet. You just got to push it further yeah. than you think you can. But yeah. yes, that's awesome, dude. Um, so it looks like we got some people joining in the webinar. Uh, we've got Alan. He says he's excited. And Jackie, he says, awesome. Um, so I got a question for everybody that's joining um, before we get started. Um, kind of what are y'all's use cases for AppSheet right now? Want to make sure that we're kind of gearing this webinar to make sure it's like relevant for y'all. Um, so if you want to share in the chat, maybe what industry you're in and um, what apps you're working on right now. So that way it can kind of guide the webinar and we can get some user feedback on what y'all are using AppSheet for right now. And we can kind of help y'all along the way with your app development. So we'll give you all some time to add that in the chat. Asset monitor, mon monitoring. <laughs> all right, that's hey, cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. We're going over an or inventory app today, which Ooh. might not exactly um, be what you're going over, yeah. <laughs> but it probably could take a few, a few notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely get some concepts from this inventory app. Okay, keeping track. Oh, here we go. Inventory in his green greenhouse nursery. Perfect. Yeah, this will be great. Asset tracking. Sweet. Oh, awesome. A CRM for healthcare. Very cool. Um, Alan says he wants to know how to implement mail and merge. Okay, so like email marketing, invoice billing from Jackie. Sweet. Alan, I love that use case. Um, I have a client currently that is a 
medical missions, a Christian mon- medical missions over in Haiti right now. And we built an electric um, healthcare record um, in EHR, I believe it's called, um, mm-hmm. where it's essentially a lot of the like processes that you would take for maybe blood work or for different labs and then different physical forms and stuff like that. And so without it being like the requirement of like United States HIPAA and stuff with it being a, a medical mission in Haiti, we've been able to just like really go all out on automating and making it a lot easier for um, the Haitian people to enter in data about their patients. And it's it's been awesome. And you get some awesome data on it about like, the infant mortality rate, like it decreasing, um, and just like a whole lot of cool statistics whenever you're, whenever you're monitoring the data on the health industry. And so I, I've, I've recently been really passionate about AppSheet towards the health industry. So I think that's awesome that you're working on a CRM for that. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, that is super exciting. All right. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, another person saying they're creating an inventory app for multiple projects for the same company and, and many companies, plus a complete set of project management apps, including inspection, payments, et cetera. That is awesome. Sweet. Generating invoices. All right. Sweet. Yeah, I think y'all will be excited about next week as well. We're going to be kind of combining, well, maybe two weeks from now. Um, we'll do one more app in the manufacturing industry and then we'll show you how to combine all those apps into a suite of apps so that'll be super sweet okay we got a question here cam um Mm -hmm. he says do you think it's complicated to create apps um that meet hipaa requirements in the healthcare industry um i i don't entirely know what all is required for HIPAA. Okay. Um, I know there is a level of security of data, uh-huh. which I believe Google is working on the, the total certification of the whole ecosystem being HIPAA compliant when it comes to the security of the, of the data. Yeah. And so if that has not came in place, I believe it will be eventually. Mm -hmm. But also the requirements behind that is like, you have to have both sides of the app sheet has to be secure. Yeah. And then the connection to the database has to be secure. Mm -hmm. And then final, the actual database itself has to be secure because you're, you're storing documents like, like social security numbers and um, some really high, like high security need Um, behind a lot of the documents that you're storing and just like there's high levels of um, security filters that need to be in in place well high high level of like need for protection of the information that you're storing yeah data um Mm -hmm. so i I would i would i would do a lot of research before jumping into a hipaa um, compliant app with an Mm -hmm. app sheet I would yeah. probably talk to maybe a salesperson over at AppSheet mm-hmm. and get their opinion on it. Um, but also there's, I imagine in the AppSheet community, there's been a lot of talk about it. But like I said, the app that I'm working on currently is um, being deployed over in Haiti. And so mm-hmm. it has a lot less requirements and um, compliant, a list of compliant items that I have yeah. to follow. But yeah. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, I know there's some other security filters that you can set up, um, with like SQL databases and maybe some more secure data structures. Um, is that, is that correct, Cam, or is there? um, Absolutely. Um, you can limit Mm -hmm. a lot of data from coming onto the app to avoid certain users accessing that data. Mm -hmm. however um it's still you have to have that level of security on every single step of the process between the database the connection to the database and the actual app itself for sure so yeah yeah. sweet all right guys well it's 10 o'clock um i just want to welcome everyone here we're glad everybody is able to join 
Um, I still see some comments coming in um, and we will definitely get to these um, throughout the webinar. So keep posting your comments in the chat. Um, we're, we're glad everybody's connecting with us. Super excited to have everyone here. Um, we wanna get started on time. So we're gonna go ahead and continue into the webinar. All right, so like we said, we're glad everyone's here. Um, this is our inventory app for the manufacturing industry. Um, and these, these are our weekly webinars where we're gonna take a look at each of these apps um, and kind of break them down, show you some features, and then show you how to build those features. Um, but just to start out, um, if you're just joining us right now, um, I'm Austin from AppSheet Training, and I'm joined here today with Cam. Um, a little bit about me and what I do here, I'm the Director of Marketing. So if you have content ideas or you wanna see something on our YouTube channel, reach out to me um, and we'll be able to kind of connect and maybe um, get some of your ideas up on our YouTube channel. Um, and just, we love connecting with people and getting to know y'all and seeing what, what you're interested in. Um, so yeah, I'll let Cam introduce himself. Yeah, I had a short little introduction before we formally started, but my name yeah. is Cameron Lupton. I've been working at Crew Technologies for around four years now and have been working in the AppSheet platform since then. I had zero experience as a developer. I originally got brought in as a graphic designer, and that's where my history was in. And so just really take this like as a, a testimony that you can take on and that you can own, that like you don't need this, this big background and um, you don't need this big background in development to just be building apps that actually transform and actually bring value to your companies. Yeah. Um, and so super, super proud of the progress that AppSheet has made over those four years and the way that they've been able to curate a product that is able to cover such a vast reach of um, different use cases and workflows and ways that it could automate your company. But yes. Awesome. Well, we're glad to have you here, Cam, um, and super excited to be doing this webinar with you today. Um, so I think we're going to get some great insights from him. He's got tons of experience working with clients all around the world, um, developing some really cool apps. Um, so um, if you stay focused and stay with us, um, you're going to learn a lot from Cam today. All right. So um, here's our agenda for today. We're just going to be going over and in some introductions, kind of prepping you up for the webinar, uh, making sure you have everything you need to be successful throughout the webinar. And then once the webinar is over, giving you those, um, some of those resources that you can use to continue developing on your own. Um, and then we're gonna look at some common use cases um, in the manufacturing industry um, and some of the apps that we're gonna be developing and the app that we are developing today. And then part three is our key features. So this will, where we'll break down those key features. You'll see a little demo of us using the app. And then part four is creating the inventory app. So Cam's gonna show you how to create some cool features within the app um, and how you can um, use those features on some of the apps that you're making. Um, and then finally, part five, will have a special offer for you if you stay till the end of our webinar. So our introduction, um, by the end of this webinar, um, you're gonna learn how to automate an inventory tracking process without spending hours searching through spreadsheets or filling out paperwork all day. So here at AppSheet Training and Crew Technologies, we're all about automating those business processes um, and making sure you love your work, you love your job, um, and you're spending time doing the things that you want to do, not filling out paperwork all day, right? Um, so if you stay until the end, we have a special offer for you. So make sure um, that you stay engaged till the end of the webinar. And then a special note, um, just so that you can get the most out of this webinar, I just encourage you to spend your time here with us. Um, it's only an hour long. Um, and if you treat it like a consulting call with us, you're really gonna get a lot out of this webinar and really be able to make some huge leaps and bounds in your app sheet development process. Um, so if you stay focused with us, you're engaged with Cam, asking questions in the chat, we'll make sure to monitor those and get your questions answered throughout the webinar. Um, you're really gonna get a lot of value out of this webinar today. Um, and so we wanna make sure you get that. All right, um, and then a little bit about our company. We are an AppSheet partner. You can find us on their partner page right here. Um, and then if you 
haven't seen it already in the description, we have all of these resources linked for you. So you can open up um, the description down below and then you can access these slides. And we also have a quick reference guide and that's gonna have our inventory app there for you to open and copy. So that way you can work along with us and develop these features. And then also you can open your app up and maybe add some of the features that are in our inventory app to your app as well. Um, so like I said, we're on the partner page. We're super excited to be a partner with AppSheet. Um, and they agree that training and onboarding is the best way to uh, develop that citizen developer culture in your organization. This is our awesome crew. Um, these are our trusted AppSheet experts to help you along the way um, with your AppSheet learning journey. Deanna is our Director of Training Operations. She makes sure all of our content is relevant and up to date um, with the best practices in AppSheet. And then we have our um, some of our developers here. Um, you guys have seen Clark. Um, he's been on the webinars before. And then today you're getting to meet Cameron. And Justin, I'm sure you've seen him on some of our other YouTube videos as well. Um, and we'll try to get him on one of these webinars soon. Um, but yeah, this is our crew. The cool thing about our um, AppSheet developers is they combine expert teaching experience and their expert development experience, giving you the best of both worlds when you sign up for either our on-demand courses, boot camps, or these live webinars. Um, so you're getting that great experience and helping you along your AppSheet learning journey. All right, so I want you guys to imagine um, that when you start really learning how to utilize AppSheet and you know use it for what it's supposed to be used for, um, automating those business processes, um, your most repetitive processes are now completely automated. The paperwork is fully automated. You're no longer having to use spreadsheets as your main user interface, and team members are empowered um, to create those automated workflows on their own. That's just a powerful um, work environment to live in, and that's, that's the future. That's what it could be like in your workplace. Um, and whether you're a business owner, um, you're you're starting up your own company, or maybe you're a manager and you're working with multiple employees, um, whatever your job role is, you can take advantage of AppSheet and really empower your team or yourself to really utilize AppSheet um, to, to um, its, its best ability um, by learning it and kind of researching um, what you need to, to know to be able to um, implement these things in your workplace. So we're going to try to help you learn that today um, and get you a little bit farther in your AppSheet journey. So let's talk about some common use cases in AppSheet. Okay, so um, last week we looked at our safety inspection app. Um, and with that app, we looked at um, different inspection reports, looked at XY map coordinates. Um, so if you want to go back and watch that one, you can find it there as well. Um, and then this week, we're gonna look at inventory management. So we're gonna make sure that we're no longer using our spreadsheets or our paper forms to keep track of all of our management. We're moving into the digital era. So we need to make sure all of that's available online and digitized for our company. Okay, so some common myths that you might find um, when you're trying to transition your business process into a digital process. Um, you might think, well, my inventory process is too complex or too complicated. I'm not gonna be able to um, do that in AppSheet, but you guys, you're ready to learn, you're ready to move forward in AppSheet development. So you're already here. That's why you're here to learn how to do this. So we're gonna help you do that quickly and efficiently. Um, and maybe another myth would be that you have to hire developers to make a custom built app. Um, with AppSheet, you don't really need to do that anymore. If You've got a few skills on database. You're um, learning about how um, the AppSheet platform works. That's why we're here to help you guys do this. Um, then you're going to make a lot of progress on developing this process um, and either developing it on your own or consulting with some AppSheet developers. Um, and then the final myth is, well, there's no way I can learn this on my own. Um, well, AppSheet is designed to help citizen developers or anyone. I was a teacher about six months ago, seven months ago. Um, I didn't know anything about app development. And then when I came here and started working with the guys at Crew um, and just learning 
all the things about app development. I'm able to create systems and automations for um, our business processes. And so I really love AppSheet. I love the power of it. And once you really understand how the data works and how to visualize it and everything, it's just phenomenal. So you can do it. We believe that you, that anyone can learn how to do this. Um, and that's why we're here. Um, Cameron, did you have any other thoughts or maybe a specific use case about um, some of the apps you've worked on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that we, as a company, we do tons of development and AppSheet is, is, is called a rapid app development platform, mm -hmm. meaning yeah. that you can quickly develop new processes. And so comp us compared to a lot of like <laughs> native development development firms, we see maybe 10 different use cases a month. Whereas a lot of these companies that build with, with native development will maybe see 10 different use cases in half a decade. Um, yeah. And so we really get to see a, a wide variety of use cases and applications for AppSheet. And so like just seeing these comments flow down on the right side, mm -hmm. um, just am able to like kind of connect each one of these like use cases that you guys are mentioning with a, a previous project that we've already worked on. And so I just want to say that AppSheet is great for any intra-business um, workflow. Yeah. And what that, that, what that means um, to get rid of all that technical jargon is processes that you do within your company that stick within the company. Where AppSheet kind of falls short is customer face facing stuff where um where you want a a cheap price per user um yeah. ratio mm -hmm. but if you are using if you're using these apps with employees appsheet will do a tremendous job at automating your workflows and keeping you away from having to manually type stuff into a spreadsheet all day or writing it down on a form but just immediately some some use cases that come to mind that we usually run into quite a bit are CRMs. We run into inspection apps a lot. So maybe that's inspecting of a building. I believe that uh, that Austin actually did an, a building inspection app just mm -hmm. last week yeah. or two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that inspection app is um, inspecting a fleet of vehicles or um, construction equipment and you just need to keep up with the maintenance of that mm -hmm. and the um, preventative maintenance of different um, fleet items that you own. Um, other use cases that we run into very often are other use cases that we run into are just like dispatching of employees to different projects. If you have clients all around the, the city that you need to dispatch and drop stuff off or do work at off site. Um, so we, yeah, we run into tons of different situations, but I think the best situation is the situation that you have. The best use case is the use case that you have because Austin throws around this term citizen developer. Yeah. And um, what, we, what we want is a world where the people that are dealing with the issues are the people that are creating the apps to solve those issues. Mm -hmm. um, there's always been this disconnect between business and developers. Yeah. And what that has caused is a big lag between finding an issue and actually solving that issue. Mm -hmm. And so what AppSheet like value proposition is, is that it's, it's friendly to people that aren't developers to a point where the people dealing with the issues, even if they don't have a development background, are able to solve that issue as if they had a native development background. Um, and so I just want to empower you guys to let you know that you guys can reach out to a developer like us that has seen a use case similar to what you're already trying to solve. Mm -hmm. But I want to also empower you guys to like, <clears throat> also check out if this is something that you guys want to do yourself yeah. because that citizen developer thing is not just like a jargon keyword that we throw around is a real it's like a reality yeah. that you can actually do yourself and you can actually learn a skill and you can build an app 
for the the issue that you're dealing with day, on a day-to-day basis and make your workday better. Mm-hmm. But not also that after you build one app, you can build another app for another work use case. And yeah. since AppSheet is paper user, you're able mm-hmm. to build 30 apps and use those 30 apps throughout the day for the same price as using the one app. Nice. And so, yeah, um, yeah, super, just super hyped. And that's super really exciting cool, Cam. for yeah. all apps you can do for a company. But yeah, yeah. I really like your thoughts on that. Um, and just to continue that thought of like um, the citizen developer and being able to like create apps for your specific tasks throughout the day. When I first heard about AppSheet, I was telling everybody around here, I was like, it really feels like, um, like when I think of AppSheet and if I want to create an app for something, to me, it feels like a slide deck. So like you have a specific use case for what the, what your Google slide is going to look like, right? Well, it's kind of similar in the fact with AppSheet, um, you have a specific task that you need automated. And so you just take down those requirements and make sure that your process is really outlined. And then within hours, you can have a new process up and running and get your team involved um, and really getting that app to help you guys internally create those processes. Sweet. All right. Um, we did have some questions in the chat and I just wanted to let you guys know that we are going to get to those. Um, so the first one was about the software, if we can send and receive data between different software services. Um, and then the second one was about ref, ref views um, and kind of those foreign keys and primary keys in the database. Um, so those are on our list um, to talk about. Those are some great questions. Um, so keep them coming and we will definitely get to those. I'll let Cam get to those when it's um, his turn to um, get into the inventory app build. All right. Um, so our inventory management app is a digital inventory management system. Um, so you're going to be able to automate your inventory management throughout your organization with this app. So I want to go ahead and show you guys some of the key features over here. Um, So we have our dashboard views, we have a chart view in this app, um, an inventory tracking form, some actions and behaviors to help the user experience uh, work a little bit better. And then we also added some automations and bots. I know a lot of people have been um, trying to look for different different how-to videos on bots as opposed to um, workflows. Um, So if you're um, maybe struggling with the the bot creation, and trying to generalize a skill of the workflow um, to how AppSheet is um, using the bots now. Um, We'll talk about that today as well. Um, And then here's a few of our expressions that we're gonna talk about. So the sum select, that is a pretty big one um, that's used um, throughout a lot of our apps here. Um, We have a now expression, link to form is a good one for helping users navigate and pre-fill forms for them. And then dereference. If you guys aren't sure how to use dereference, um, these are really cool um, app sheet expressions that let you go into um, like another um, data table that you've created inside of your database really quickly. So I'll let Cam kind of talk to that a little bit more. Um, and so let me go over here to our app. So this is our inventory app. Let me rotate it real quick. All right, Um, so this is designed for like manufacturing industry. So think about like when you have those raw materials, work in progress materials and finished goods. um, And then it has a list of inventory items here. So this is a dashboard view um, and Cam will kind of speak into how to create this and um, create all these functionalities a little bit more. Um, So raw materials, if you click that, it's just gonna filter um, to show only the raw materials. Um, and then this is actually used, um, this workflow, the way you set this up is with those, um, primary keys and foreign keys. So we'll talk a little bit about that when setting up the database structure. And so now we're seeing just the work in progress. And then next we've got finished goods. All right. Um, and so if we wanted to fill out a new inventory item, we're just going to click this and it auto populates all of the inventory. It's a um, Chromebook, it's finished goods, and we can see the image there. Um, And then we can list right here 
how much inventory you have in stock. So we'll say we have um, 40 items in stock now. So we'll save that. And then if we go over here to the log um, and we were on finished goods, we'll click that and we'll scroll to the bottom. And there we go. There's our record of the 40 um, Chromebooks right there. And then if we click on the stock view, we can see uh, a chart view. And this one's also filtered by our raw materials, work in progress and finished goods. Um, so we'll take a look at how to design this app in just a minute. Just wanted to give you guys a quick preview. And then over here in the menu bar, we also have the team. So I just like to add this and into all of the apps just to make sure that we can communicate with our team if we need to. It looks like I had to, I missed your, uh, your little thumbnail <laughs> there, Cam, my bad. All right. Okay. Maybe so we'll throw a selfie in it or something. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be fun. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to our slides. Okay, so part four, um, Cam's about to come up and um, show you guys how to create this app, but just to give you guys kind of like a frame of reference of where we're going, um, I always like to show this slide um, to kind of help you think about our app development process. Um, so the first thing you're always gonna to wanna to do is make sure you create the database and that data structure so that you can um, edit and customize it in the app editor and then get a lot of user buy-in um, and use throughout your organization. So if you set it all up right, um, use throughout your organization or whoever you want to use your app um, will be uh, adopted really quickly. So creating that experience, you're gonna organize your data so that it meets the needs of your project or um, of your team. And so these are our data relationships. Um, so we have an item type, this is a parent table. And then we also have the items. So those were the items you saw listed on the right. And then the item type is like those raw materials um, or the other ones, work in progress and uh, finished goods. <laughs> I was blanking for a second. Um, so we have this parent table, it filters into the child table. And this is technically the grandchild of this table, um, but there's also, it's also a child table of the team table. Um, so. We, the inventory is, is that form where all the data is kind of collected together. And so we load who, who logged the inventory um, into this table. And then again, all of this stuff is connected through this inventory table. So I'll let Cam talk a little bit about the database when he gets into his um, app build. And then our UX views. Again, we have the teams, the items, the inventory log and the stock. Um, and so we'll take a look at those and how to set up those UX views inside of AppSheet. And then actions, we'll create a custom action that's that link to form that will allow users to fill out that inventory form quickly. Um, and then our custom bot, this is gonna send out um, how much um, inventory items are left in stock for the managers to either like, you need to order more, more of this certain item um, because it's out of stock. So that's, what our custom bot will do, and Cam will show you how to set that up as well. Um, so I'll, without further ado, I'll let Cam get into um, setting up the editor. I'm gonna stop my screen share, um, and then he is gonna demo how to set up some of these features for you guys. I need um, ability to share real quick, and okay. I'll be able to jump on that. There you go, dude. Awesome, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, guys, um, a lot of times when working in AppSheet, we talk about AppSheet being data-driven app development. And what that means is everything that you do within AppSheet is data-driven. Everything is dependent on the data that you have inside of your database. And so if you want a field to show up inside of a form, you have to add a column for that. If you want a a view to be populated with data for a specific entity of data, you have to have a table that represents that entity of data within your schema. So um, just immediately reading through the comments, one thing I want to hit on first is the relationship in a, ref a reference relationship and what is a foreign key and what is a primary key. This is a topic that we cover really in depth in the AppSheet Essentials bootcamp mm -hmm. and on-demand course. Um, and so just really quickly want to go over that. And I think the, the best example for that in this situation is the item table. 
And so I'll go over the item table after I go over the rest of the tables. Um, so Austin kind uh, of shared with us the, yes, Austin. Uh, I was just going to say, do you mind uh, zooming in a little bit? Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. Sweet. Thanks dude. For sure. Is that better? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have four tables. And in this situation, we are going to call those four entities. The first entity is the team, a team member. And so a single item from the team is a team member or an employee or a staff. And we can see that each one of those staff members are represented by a record of data within the team table. And the different columns inside the team table represent a, a property, a piece of information about that, about that team member. And so whenever you're building out a, a table, you want to think whenever you're building out the full schema for an app, you want to think out what entities are the, is this app going to be displaying data of? Mm -hmm. And so for a team member, we want to have their email for who's logged into AppSheet right now. That way we know what user it is. Um, a thumbnail. So a picture of that employee, maybe what their first name is, what their last name is, what their phone number is. And then we have what their role is. Um, so next we have item. And these items are the actual inventory items that we have. So maybe... We see things like different processors, different laptops, different desktop monitors, all that stuff, hard drives, solid state drives. These are our items. So each record that we see is an individual item. And we see a primary key right here. And then we see something else that looks like a primary key right here. We'll go over that in just a moment. Um, and then we have an image, a name, and a description. These are all properties of that record. And so just going through the rest real quick, we have inventory where we cover the different properties of inventory. Think of inventory as a transaction of an item. So it's either you adding to the sum of the item's balance or count or current qu quantity, or you're subtracting from it. And so if you were to sell 10, you would do minus 10. If you were to restock 20, you would be adding 20 into the amount right here. And so just think of inventory as a transaction of an item, either a positive transaction or a negative transaction. Mm -hmm. Finally, we have item types. This is kind of classifies the what type of item the item is into three different categories. In this situation, the three categories are raw materials, uh, work in progress, and finished goods. Um, to finally go into the, the topic that Dale was asking about, which is the parent-child relationship whenever you use a ref column type within AppSheet and the primary key that it creates and the foreign key. So our primary key, what its use is, is to determine to the app what record is which row inside the data. And so this is what the computer or what the app determines the record is defined by, is this one, one cell right here. Um, whereas a label is what a human, what I would personally would say how I recognize or determine which row is which. And so for me, for me, it's easy for me to see this name motherboard and know what record it is. However, it's really hard for me to memorize this. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's, you, you run into instances where maybe there's a motherboard and like there's a million different motherboards that people are, that people are selling. There's Intel ones, there's Asus, there's, um, there's a million different companies that each sell a million different <laughs> uh, models. And yeah. so like if we had motherboard as the ID, then we would run into a situation very often where we have two IDs that are the same thing. And so one comparison we like to say for primary keys 
primary keys are essentially your social security number. You might run into a situation where you have the same first, middle, and last name as somebody in the United States. However, your social security will always be different than anybody else in the world. And so what this means is that the government doesn't rely on your first and last name to determine who you are. It determines on that unique ID that it has for you. That way it never runs into a search for that, that person and it returns two people. It will only ever return one person. Um, and so that goes into the concept of a foreign key. So a foreign key looks a lot like a primary key. And then a foreign key, the reason why it looks like one is because it is a primary key of another table. So one way that we like to do foreign keys with an app sheet is we usually label the primary key just ID. That way it's very easy to determine what is the ID, the key column for this table. However, on the item type ID, we can say that that is a foreign key coming from the item type table. And so if I go ahead and copy this, this foreign key from this table and go over to the item type table, and then I hit control F and paste that key that I just did in and hit enter, we can see that foreign key shows up as a primary key right here. So we can say that this record right here is being referenced right here in the other table. And so what all this means is that whenever you're looking at this record, you also have access to the information of that specific item type within this record. And so a way to summarize that is a primary key defines what record is what within its own table. Whereas a, a primary key I mean, a foreign key is the primary key of a separate table that is referencing another record from another table. All right. And so let, let's go ahead and jump into the app and um, see an example of what a, a primary key and foreign key do within an app. So right here inside the data, if we go over into an item, we can see that inside of columns, there is a, a reference to item type inside the item table that is represented with this column that we're covering right here. And if we click into this pencil right here, we can see that the table that this ref is targeting is the item type table. So this, this connects some really cool things within your app, like whenever we go into a view like this, this is the item type and this is the item. And since labels and shipping boxes are referencing the work in progress table, then we're able to filter it by whichever one of these we click. And so if we were to instead click, instead of work in progress, if we were to click raw materials, we would now see all the items that are actually referencing the raw materials. Um, this, this is having multiple tables that are referencing and um, communicating with each other is called normalized data. And it is the key to having your app um, develop data <laughs> in a way that allows you to use a lot of the benefits of AppSheet. Um, so let me go ahead and read what you're saying. Yeah, so the easiest way is to have one-to-many relationships with an app sheet. And what that means is um, this reference right here is one-to-many, um, meaning there is one um, reference of what item, it is, what item type it is to the work in progress. Um, and so there, there can only be one item type for this item, but that means that there can be, in this situation, two items that are referencing this. So there's this one to many. Um, and so there's another concept called um, many to many. And what we usually do for that 
is we usually have a intermediate table that connects those two together. And so I'm trying to think of a situation where um so yeah within appsheetraining.com um we have boot camps and we have users. Um we want to be able to not only give that customer multiple boot camps if they paid for multiple boot camps, but we also want that boot camp to be accessible to multiple people. So this requires a many to many relationship. Um, and so within appsheetraining.com, um, the way that we deal with many to many relationships is doing something like this. So we have a user table and let's just type in email. And then next we have a, let's say a course table. We want to be able to give a course to multiple users, but we also want multiple users to be able to access that course as well. And so what that means is we need an intermediate, um, like a mediator table um, that we'll call owned courses. All right. And so inside of owned courses, we would have who is the owner? This would be a... Um, who the owner would be, we'll call this user ID. And I'll just put in parentheses owner. That way we can know. And then we want to say what course they own. So that's going to be a, um, a reference to the course. And this is going to be a reference to the user. And so we can say, let's type in a few unique IDs. We can say that Cameron owns um, Expression Mastery. But Cameron also owns, um, let's say, AppSheet Essentials. So we, we're able to cover the ability for that user to own multiple, to have multiple um, courses but we also want, let's say, Austin to be able to own that same course. And so, yeah, whenever you're dealing with many-to-many -many relationships, you usually want to have some sort of intermediate table that shows ownership over that item. That way, it's not locked into only one person. And then you would just use this as a list, and you would do a, a, a select of what items are owned, what courses are owned by that user. Yeah, that's awesome, Cam. Thanks for sharing that. These are yeah, for sure. Some great questions coming in and getting some. Yeah. Many, yeah. many to many relationships. Once you do your first once you do it the first time, you start realizing how powerful it is. And it's awesome to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw a question earlier about um, let me see. I believe is yeah, Alan right there. Mm -hmm. He said, selects can slow down your app. Any tips to improve performance mm -hmm. um, would be great. So um, for those of you who do, do not know what the select is, um, it basically searches through all your data of a table and it runs a filter on it and returns a column that you specify of whatever records past that that filter constraint that you put on it. And so it can slow down your app, especially if you have tons and tons of data. Because let's say if I did a select where I want to select all the rows where um, the added, where the um, the inventory item was added by Justin at appbeattraining.com. It would go through every single row of the data and say, okay, I want to select this row because it has Justin. I want to skip this row because it does not have Justin. It's going to go through every single row checking if it has Justin or not. Um, and so the, the issue isn't whenever you have a database this big. It's going to process each one of these items in 0 0.00001 seconds. However, if you have 10,000 rows and it's checking a yes, no filter, that might take 10, like it might take like one second or half a second, let's say. 
But let's say if we're trying to make the filter statement to say, okay, I want to see if it was added by Justin, but I also want to see that it was added after 2020, but before 2022. So now I'm putting three requirements on what it's checking for each row. And so now instead of only checking one thing per row, now it's checking three things. And so now essentially it's three times slower. And so now that 0.5 seconds for 10,000 records, let's say now it's 1.5 seconds. So that means that every single time you resync your app, you now have to wait 1.5 seconds longer. And so if you're just using these select statements on giant databases without like thinking of what it's doing to the app, then you can really actually slow down your app over time. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of ways to, to diagnose the issue. And um, there's 99% of the time situations where you can solve that just by using a little bit of intuition and a little experience and facing different use cases. Um, and so I'm actually going to go over one of those right now. And so let's imagine this database instead of having, um, instead of having 24 rows, let's assume that this database instead had 240,000 rows. Okay. That's a lot of records. Um, and so let's, let's see how we would deal with this database if we multiplied this by 10,000. All right. <laughs> we would have to think of this app in a completely different way because right now we're using a virtual column to sum together all the transactions of that item over its whole history ever. And so that, that is a great thing to do if you're a smaller business that is only going to have maybe 300 transactions a year. But if you're, if you're Amazon and you make 3,000 transactions a day, you're really going to have to like change up what you're doing to handle that data. Um, and so right now we have under item, we have a sum select that is selecting all the transactions, all the inventory transactions of that item in all of history. And then it's summing together all the amounts. So it's going through every single thing for every single, every time you reload the app or make a change to the data, since it's a virtual column, it's checking out, um, let's say for this item right here, it's going through every single record and saying, okay, is it, this data equal this, okay? So we'll add in that record. And then it goes, scrolls down and goes through every single one looking for another BC. And then this one's pretty easy because there's only one transaction of it. And so it's summing together two. But if we go over to, uh, let's say this E2F one, let's say AppSheet grabs all of these right here. And then it's also checking if there's any instances of it above it, which, um, there is right here and there is right here. And so now AppSheet's taking the values of all those amounts and then it's summing them together to create a total amount. So what's making this slow is that anytime there's a transaction it has to recalculate this. Um, what we can do is we can make it only recalculate whenever the data is updated. So what we can do, instead of having a virtual column, let's go ahead and create something that does the same thing, but is a static column instead of virtual. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy onto this a new column. So I'm gonna insert a column to the, um, to the left, and I'm gonna do current quantity. All right. And so AppSheet has not caught up with this database yet. So we have to kind of tell AppSheet, hey, we added a new column to the schema. We want you to regenerate this table for us. So we're gonna go ahead and hit regenerate on the table that we just added a record for. All right, so now we can see that current quality quantity now showing up inside of AppSheet. Um, so we previously had this right here. 
And what it's doing is it's summing together all the amounts of that record. What we want to do is whenever there is a transaction made for an item, we want to trigger a action that runs. And what it's going to do is it's going to do this expression right here for that item that it just made a change for. That way it doesn't have to run every single time there's any change to the app. So it's a, it's, this thing is happening once per update of that item instead of it happening every single time there's any change to any data inside the app or every time you resync the app. So how we're gonna do that is a transaction is made whenever you're inside the inventory and click this action button right here. We can see that um, we can either do a negative amount or a positive amount. And so um, what we wanna do is whenever we do plus 30 right, like, like that, we want to go to that item. Whenever we hit save, we want to run an action that goes to that item and will add 30 to the current quantity. All right, and so let's go ahead and do that. So this is inside the inventory table. So we wanna go ahead and create a action inside of the inventory table. And so I'm gonna call this um, CQ, current quantity updater. And I want to update an item inside of, um, so we're, we're going to choose inventory, but it's going to update um, values in a different row. And so we're going to look at the different options we have. Um, so uh, because we're creating this action inside of the inventory and we're trying to update something inside of the item table, then we need to execute an action on a set of rows of a separate table. So this is going to be running on the items. So this action is gonna happen on inventory, but is going to run on the item table. And so what rows that we want to update is, so if I open up the app sheet toolbox right here, we can see the schema and the column that we want to update are the items where, um, the item ID right here. So what, what this is gonna do is it's going to run the action that we create next on this ID. Um, we can see right here that's expecting a list and we only need it to happen on one, but we can also just make this a list of one object. And so now whatever action we connect to this is going to run on the item ID of the item that we just added inventory for. So now we need to choose what action that we're actually going to run. Since it has not been created, let's go ahead and create it. All right, so I'm gonna create a new action and we want this to be in the item table. And this is going to be step two of QC or CQ. Um, and so we want to update values from this row. And so the row that we want to do is the C, the current quantity. And we have that expression that um, we borrowed from Austin's previous virtual column. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. And so now instead of doing it as a virtual column every single time, it's only going to happen whenever there's a inventory added to that, that item. And so now we're only running one select function instead of running one select function for every record every single time there's any change or any sync done to the app. So now if we go back to that other one, we can go to CQ updater and choose that step two right there. Let's go ahead and hit save. And then if we go back to that form that we are working on, we can go ahead and edit that view by hitting this view button right here under the emulator. And if we scroll down here to behavior, 
we can run an action whenever the form is saved. We want to do CQ updater. All right. So since all these are static columns as of right now, we can see that all these current quantities are currently blank because it's not, it's not consistently updating. It's only updating whenever there's a change. So um, we'll be able to change one of these items and do a recount of how many, um, how much the quantity is. And so let's go ahead and just choose one that we see multiple um, adjustments made for it. So if we go to stock right here, we can see that there is, um, for the RAM, there's negative 42. Let's go ahead and reconcile that, um, that balance of items. And let's go ahead and create a inventory item. I mean, uh, inventory log transaction. And see if the thing worked. So we want to go to raw materials and go to the RAM right here. And then we want to add. So we were at negative 42. Let's go ahead and make it positive 72. And so we should have positive 30 after we reconcile those that negative balance. Let's go ahead and hit save. We can see right here that it's not only saving that form, but it's actually saving a second sync right there. That is that that behavior, the action that we're running as well. So we can see it slowly doing it in the background. Um, it's, it's done now, but I'm gonna go ahead and sync anyways. But now if we go to that random access memory, let's go. I don't know, is, is there a um, detail view for these items that I can access? Um, like by clicking on them? Mm -hmm. um, I think okay, I, I, yeah. I can go to the form, but we can yeah. see right here mm -hmm. that, yeah, it worked. There's now a quantity total of 30. And so now this is only happening whenever we make a change to that to the relative items um, instead of happening over and over and over and over a thousand times a day. And so now we reduce that theoretical 1.5 seconds added to the sync time to zero. Because now it only happens whenever you make a change to that one item. And it only happens for X amount of records. Um, I, I think, do I have enough time to cover one more thing real quick, Austin? Yeah, sure. We can do okay, cool. one more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so another thing that was mentioned, I believe, by um, Hani, uh, if I'm correct, about um security filters mm -hmm. um i feel like that is a good thing to um yeah absolutely i would i would make that uneditable by the user um for sure okay so um let's go back to that imagination that we are um we are currently working with 20, 240,000 rows of data. Mm -hmm. And let's say we have an item that we no longer store. Let's say that item is now obsolete. They've came out with a new model for it. We no longer offer it. They've even, they even stopped manufacturing it. So we can't even buy more of it. We've already sold all that we have of it. And there's no way we're ever going to get more. Um, so what we could do is we could add a new column right here. Let's, let's go back and say, okay, this, this table right here has 14 um, items. Let's pretend this one has 140,000 items again. And so we're going to go ahead and insert a column, and I'm going to call this um, active. And it's either going to be true or false. I'm just going to go ahead and put true for all these. And so what this is saying is, is, is this an active item that we're actually tracking still? Um, and so we're going to go ahead and make a few of these false. Meaning that we are no longer um, storing this product. And so um, another way to approach the speed of an app is not only the formulas that you use that are less taxing and less computing power, but the other approach is to limit the amount of rows that are being brought into the app. 
because formulas, whenever they're, whenever they're executed on less records, run faster. Whenever they're executed on more records, they run slower. <laughs> they have to happen more times. Yeah. Um, so if you're um, keeping less records from coming into your database, then it's not using computing power on columns that you don't want to see anyways. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to, we want to keep um, all these records that are false right here from ever even making it to the app. So we don't want to waste the computing power on those records. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is go over to the data and then go to the, um, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to go to security yeah. and I'm going to go to security filters. Sorry, I forgot how to app sheet for a moment. <laughs> um, and we're going to see right here that I am a Jerry and I have not um, regenerated that record. And so under item, um, that new column I added is not there yet. So let's go ahead and go to data. Let's go to columns. Let's go to items and let's regenerate that. That way we can finally have that, that, um, that new column that we added active. And we see that it automatically set it to yes, no. That is great. Um, and let's go ahead and make it where, um, this is a really quick thing. Let's go ahead and expand this. That way we can put a formula on the active and let's make it where only managers can see this row. And so I'm going to use an any select. You could use a lookup if you wanted to, but I'm going to do it any select and see if the user that is currently using the app, the team member is a manager or not. If they are a manager, I want them to be able to see this thing and I want them to be able to edit it. But if they are not a manager, then they shouldn't have the ability to say if an item is active or not. Because mm -hmm. that could really cause some issues if if the if Jerry, who's got hired two days ago, made their most highest selling product um, inactive. Okay. So let's go ahead and say we want to return their role. And we want to return the role of the user <clears throat> who of the team member whose email is equal to the user email. User email returns the email of the person who's currently logged into AppSheet. All right, and let's say we want that same formula to run on the edit. So only, um, only allowing... Wow, I, sorry. I did any select of the role and then the email equals that. I need to actually return this as a yes, no. And so I'm going to do it equals manager. Did I spell manager right? I assume I did. I hope I did. <laughs> manager. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sometimes I forget I'm native English. Um, I'm still learning to be fluent in English. So, um, okay, let's, let's go. Okay. So now we're seeing that, um, it's only showing or only editable for managers because it's, that's important, but also let's go ahead and make it where we don't want to see data if the active is false. So we only want to see the records where active equals true. So you can put anything right here that is a yes, that returns yes, no. And so if we wanted to add different parameters, we could either do an and or an or function. But <laughs> yeah, freaking Jerry's. Uh, <laughs> um, so now if we go ahead and save this and save this, now it will only show active items to, um, it will only show the active items for all the inside the app. But if you wanted to do one last thing right here, we could say we either want to, if they are a manager, then it should return true for everything. So let's say managers see everything, but if they are not a manager, then it relies on this one right here to be true. Um, and so what this does right here is if they're a manager, they see all data, active or inactive. But if this is false, then it relies on this right here to be true to show a record. 
Meaning, if they are not a manager, they only see active. But they are a manager, and they see all data. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and hit save. Um, I'm currently logged into app at grease.solutions. We can see that right here. Mm -hmm. And I want to see what type of user I am. I am a manager, so I should be able to see the data that I marked as inactive. So one of those is the HP, um, the Asus Chromebook, let's say. Let's go ahead and see if I can see that. HP Chromebook. Asus Chromebook, I can see them both. All right, let's um, real quickly change what user we are. And this will be the final thing we do real quick. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to a non-manager. Let's copy that email. And right here, you can change what email you're previewing the app as. So now instead of app at grease.solutions, our, um, our development profile, we want to do it from Clark. And so now if I go to, um, let's say, finish goods, whereas on this app right here, we see three items. Whenever they're an employee, we only see that one item because that's the only item right there that is currently active. Nice. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Very good. I'll go ahead and stop sharing for you. Okay, cool. Wow, that was that was really great, Cam. I really um, felt like we got a lot of value out of that. Um, just all of y'all's questions were really insightful, and um, Cam did a great job of just um, being able to answer those with like practical use cases and everything. Um, so um, give some shout outs and kudos to Cam. Um, hit the like button. So um, we know that you appreciated his content. Uh, we really liked that. I really liked that explanation. So um, that was great. Um, glad you guys were able to um, get some of your specific questions answered in this webinar. Um, I really liked um, one of my favorite parts was the security filters and then also the select expression, just um, showcasing how to make that more, um, how do you say, uh, just work faster in AppSheet, you know? Um, I thought that was a really great explanation of that. Um, so Cam really um, hit a home run today. That was awesome. Um, a lot of that stuff was on the fly. So great job, dude. Um, that was a really, really cool um, app demo. Um, so like we said, you can get all of this, um, this, this app build that we did. It's in the description below. You just click on the reference template or you can navigate to our app portfolio and you're going to click on the inventory app, and then that'll take you to copy and customize the app for your business process. All right. Okay, so just by way of review, um, what we looked at today was organizing our data sets. Cam did a really great job of showing you um, what a data structure looks like, um, what a database looks like, and then how to organize that for this specific use case and also um, one of your use cases. Um, we looked at how to customize those features inside of AppSheet. And then what you'll do, um, kind of your homework after this, is you can optimize this app for your business process. Um, so that's a quick review of our app. Um, so next, we're going to kind of transition into how to set up your AppSheet training profile. So your first step is to go over to appsheettraining.com and sign up for your AppSheet training profile. Um, and then you're going to um, once you sign up for your profile, you can also sign up for a free tech talk. So I put a link in uh, the chat to sign up for a tech talk. If, if we didn't have time to get to your questions, I know there was some about how can we um, connect with other software, or um, I saw another one about maybe multiple companies. There's some quick um, ways to set up like a, like a warehouse table. Um, that was something that I was going to add to this app. Um, it's basically just another table that you'd set up. And then you can add those security filters, kind of like Cam was showing you there, to only allow um, specific warehouse users to see um, their warehouse items. Um, and then for the software, um, that's a little bit more technical um, question. So we can definitely answer that on a tech talk. Um, and then step three, start learning AppSheet and automating your business process. Um, so once you get set up with our, with our profile and your tech talk, um, we'll get you... Um, 
geared up for learning and creating those business processes with AppSheet. So like I said, we have some free resources um, that we're going to give away today. Um, so if you stuck out um, stuck with us till the end. We have our AppSheet development process. You get this when you sign up for your um, AppSheet training um, profile. Um, so go ahead and sign up for that, and then you'll get this in your um, inbox shortly after that. Um, we also have our Chrome extension. This is, um, I believe it's in the description below. If it's not, I'll, I'll add it after um, the webinar is over. You can access this Chrome extension. You saw Cam using it a little bit in his demo. Um, and what this allows you to do is type out those expressions um, with like a drop down menu and access all your data tables. So check that out. That's a really great resource. I love using that when I'm making and developing apps and app sheet. We also have a free task tracker app build. So this is a, this is a great um, like first step in app sheet training. So if you're wondering, is this the right resource? Is, are these the right tools for me to help me learn app sheet? Um, and start making some great progress on my app development. This is a course you're gonna to wanna to take, it's free. You'll get to see how um, the module-based learning style is, if you like it. A lot of our users are really enjoying that. Um, it's really quick and referenceable. Um, so it's, it's geared towards beginners and you'll learn how to develop a task tracker app when you finish the course. And then, like I said, finally, you can sign up for your free tech talk. You'll get expert advice, customized use case guide, and next steps on how we can help you build out your app. So make sure you sign up. Um, I'm hearing a lot of um, emails right now. So I'm thinking um, some people are signing up for those tech talks. Um, so super excited to meet with you guys. Uh, make sure you sign up before um, there's limited availability um, for those. Um, okay, so next part, I was gonna ask you guys a question. Um, if, you, if there was a way to continue this conversation, would you like to do that? Um, we have a couple more things left on the table um, for this webinar. We can end it right now or we can continue the conversation um, and I'll just select either yes or no. Um, go ahead and throw it in the chat if you would like to continue this conversation. Cool, I'm seeing some comments. All right, got a yes. All right, okay, sweet. All right, some people have to go. Okay, I got a few more yeses, cool. If you have to go, no worries. Um, glad you were able to join us, Dale. It was great having you on and um, getting to see your questions and how you're using AppSheet. Okay, um, for those of you that wanna stick around, um, we're gonna go ahead and go and continue this conversation. So I wanted to share with you guys um, some of our resources that we have available um, for you to purchase on appsheettraining.com. So our vehicle inspection is our first uh, build path. Um, this is a total value of $997. So what you're gonna get and why we price it um, this way, um, we're just showing you the value of what is included in this course. So you get a custom built app tailored towards building a vehicle inspection app. So there's a lot of value and time um, it took to build this course. And um, it's, it's really great at showing you how to build this vehicle inspection app. Um, and then next we have our app template. So when you're going through this course, you're gonna also get access to this um, specific app. Um, and so this, this app is valued at $749. And the way I want you guys to think about that is like if you're hiring, um, one of the crew team members here to build a custom vehicle inspection app for you. It costs about this much um, with the amount of time and the hours um, to build all these custom feature sets into this one app. Um, and we'll show you the actual price in just a minute, but this is our total value for this um, specific course and that app. Um, and then the, another um, item that you're gonna get within this, um, within this course is the full vehicle inspection database. So you're not gonna have to try to learn how to design a vehicle inspection database on your own. We provided that for you when you purchased this course. This is a total value of $149. Um, so right out of the gate, if you're wanting to build a vehicle inspection app um, or any kind of inspection app, you have a database ready to go, fully designed for you. Um, and then you can just put it into your 
uh, workflow, customize a few features and get it ready to go for your business process. Um, so one of our students um, left a great review um, and they were saying that the course was fantastic. It was at the perfect pace. It was a modular style of on-demand learning. Um, it really suited their style of learning and it was specific, referenceable and efficient. Um, so they're excited for more content like this. So what you get with this course, remember you're getting that vehicle inspection, that entire module-based course. Um, you're gonna get an advanced app build and you're getting your Google Sheets data. This is a video course. Um, this is not the live course. So that all of that is valued at $1,895, right? Okay, and so the next one that we have to offer is our boot camps. Now I wanna really emphasize part. This is the last time you'll be able to purchase a live boot camp on our website. Okay, so this is our full live boot camp where you get to work with an AppSheet developer like Cameron and um, you guys got to see how interactive it was. Um, this is the experience that we've created um, with our boot camps as well. So this is this course is valued at $1,499. Um, and then you're also gonna get an app build. The cool thing about this course is you get two app builds. You get the timesheet app and the sandbox app. So that's valued at $749. Um, and then you're also getting your database. So this is a fully functional timesheet um, database. You're not gonna have to go out and try to organize the data on your own. Maybe you're working with a bunch of different forms or timesheets for your organization right now. Um, and you're wondering, how do I make this into a fully functional app? We've done that for you. We've done the, the behind the scenes work. So all you have to do is visualize it in AppSheet. And then you also get an instructor showing you how to create some really advanced um, expressions. So this is valued at $149. And then you're gonna get all those session materials, recordings, um, and everything you need to be successful on building um, a timesheet app with AppSheet. And this is gonna be valued at $279. And then finally, you have your live Q&A to get your specific questions answered. Again, that value is $149. And the last uh, thing is priceless, your shareable certificate. So I shared last week, um, I actually completed a data analytics course through Coursera. Um, and that shareable certificate was really revolutionary in my career. Um, I was able to change my career path from being a teacher into um, working here full time at Crew Technologies. Um, so certificates and leveling up your skills is really the future of how to kind of either transition into a new career path or move up in whatever industry you're trying to um, go into. So these shareable certificates are really great um, at just helping you develop the skills and showcasing to other employers or to your employer of what you're learning. And um, here is one of, um, one of our clients, Ryan. Um, he says that AppSheet is a great equalizer. He's not a coder. He didn't have a coding background. He didn't know how to write software. Um, but once he stumbled on AppSheet, he saw the possibilities. Um, and that was a stepping off point for his company to start utilizing AppSheet. And he worked in partnership with Crew Technologies to help them build some apps for his organization. So if that sounds like you, if that sounds like something um, that you want to empower your organization with, that's what we specialize here. Um, so we really wanna help you. We really wanna um, help your organization learn how to unlock the full potential of AppSheet. So what you get with your bootcamp purchase is you're getting that expression mastery course, the advanced app, Google Sheets data, session materials, live Q&A, and that shareable certificate. All of that is valued at $2,826. But we really wanna help you guys um, make leaps and bounds with this. So I'm about to share with you the actual price of this. But before that, if all of these courses did were allow you to create your app, would it be worth it? Um, and we would say yes, because um, that's, automating your whole business process, one of your tasks um, that was taking a bunch of time, it's now fully automated. Um, would it empower your team to create innovative solutions um, for their workflows? Would it be worth it? And we would say, yeah, these, these courses are definitely worth the time um, it takes to learn. Um, and so here you can see, these are our um, two options. Again, this expression mastery course is going to be the last time um, you can purchase it online, um, where right now it's available for $4.99. This is valued at $2,826. So you're really getting a great deal, um, lots of value. Um, when people sign up for consulting, um, um, they're getting a lot more 
or rather they're getting that valuable consulting time. This is like the precursor to consulting. So you really want to make sure you sign up for these trainings. That way you can be empowered and help your team feel empowered in creating um, apps for your company. So with that, I'll stay on here for about 15 more minutes um, and answer any questions. Again, you can find, um, it, you can contact me at austinatcrewtech.com or you can also um, sign up for that free tech talk and we can help your organization get started with AppSheet training. Um, so I'll go through a few questions and then if you guys have any questions in the comments, I'm also here to answer those as well. Um, let's see. All right. Um, so the first question up here on our slides is how are the sessions hosted? So it's kind of similar to these webinars. Um, we will be hosting them on Zoom. Um, so we won't be streaming live to YouTube like this webinar, but you'll be able to sit in a course with uh, an AppSheet developer and get that one-on-one -on -one time with an AppSheet instructor. All right. And then Cameron, if you wanna add any uh, feedback to these courses, um, you've spent some time teaching them, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Yeah, so we're going more into a direction of for our boot camps of only doing enterprise, meaning a company would pay for a private boot camp of their employees that they want to empower with AppSheet skills mm -hmm. to have a one on five or let's say one on six, one on 10. Um, and we would empower your whole entire team to know how to automate and digitize their workflows in AppSheet so that your HR department could build an app for themselves. Your, mm -hmm. um, your financial department and doing payroll and all that, they can do that. And then the bosses can have their stuff to manage the employees' productivity and the salesmen can create a CRM for their own client relationships. And basically... That, that's the direction we're going. And so this is your last opportunity to actually as an individual or mm -hmm. as a single person to jump in on one of these boot camps. Yeah. And we've also gone to a point where we've done each of these boot camps probably about 15 times each. Yeah. And so we've really refined this boot camp and the curriculum to be super valuable. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is the best time to ever jump on at a boot camp, especially if you don't have the ability to have a five people, six people, 10 people pay for a boot camp privately. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a great opportunity right now. And just to like say a little bit about that, we had a, a customer take on a enterprise boot camp where they had seven people and they are a organization over in Asia mm -hmm. and we were able to have a private enterprise boot camp with them. And all these people had zero development skills. One person had the owner had just a little bit of app sheet skills over the course of a couple months mm -hmm. and really saw the value of it. And it was like, I need my whole team to learn app sheet. And yeah. so we did the app sheet essentials boot camp, And then we followed that up with the expression mastery boot camp, And then we did five hours of consulting afterwards. And now their whole entire team is autonomously creating their own apps for their own workflows. And so they've all been empowered and really have like reworked the way that their company like solves problems. And it's take, it's made it to a point where now their company is able to, now that they're solving the problems they're originally dealing with more efficiently, now they're able to bring in new problems to solve. And and they're able to help more people with their services because they have freed up so much time now. <laughs> yeah. And so um, it's, it's awesome to see people who have zero app development skills within a month be able to really change the trajectory of their company, of their yeah. single department, um, just because they said yes to a, like... 15 hours worth of boot camps. Yeah. It, it's it was honestly incredible to see and hearing and getting like emails from them consistently still to this day. Yeah. About them asking me if 
if this can be integrated through Zapier with this, if can you guys do a boot camp on this? We want another boot camp. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys have content on this. And yeah. so, um, yeah, whenever, whenever your employees are empowered to solve their own problems with mm-hmm. AppSheet, it, it changes the game. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely you're going to want to si- sign up for these courses. Um, like Cam said, the Expression Mastery Bootcamp, this will be closing on Monday. Um, and so if you don't sign up for it before then, um, that, that will be it. The next option, um, will be signing up your team or organization. Um, but if you, as an individual want to take advantage of this, um, platform, um, and really get a deep understanding of expressions and how to build out those advanced logic features in your app, expression mastery is going to be the course you want to sign up for. Um, and then if you're, new to AppSheet and you're beginning your learning journey, um, we recommend that vehicle inspection course. It's a really great course on just how to develop an app um, from start to finish and you get that database design. So there's lots of value in these courses. And then like Cam said, um, the they've been refining this the these bootcamp courses um, over the past year. And so they're really, um, you know, up to speed with best practices, not only in development, but in learning and the education, um, kind of combining those two worlds um, to help you guys um, really see uh, what's possible with AppSheet um, and really getting the language of development and understanding how to do all the nuances with inside of AppSheet. Awesome. All right. Um, I don't see a time that works for me. Um, This is one of the common questions that um, come up that has come up before. Um, when you're signing up for a live course. Um, so let's see. If you don't see a time that works for you, um, there is a button on the, on the website that you can press. Um, and and when, you, when you hit that button, you can leave feedback of when a, a more suitable time would work for you. Um, so that is one option. But then um, also in the coming months, uh, we have some more updates on that that might work better um, for everyone. Um, so, but for now, um, I'd recommend just pressing that button and filling out the form to let us know what time would work better for you. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, what kind of questions can I ask during the session? Um, so just like here, we want you to ask all the questions that you have about developing on AppSheet. Um, and there's times throughout the course that you'll be able to ask those specific questions and get them answered. Um, There is a lot of content since this is a one day course now. Um, And so we'll be moving through that content. Um, But there's structured times in the course where you can get your specific questions answered. Cam, do you want to speak into that a little bit too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I, I am immediately, sorry, drawn towards Veronica's question about which Mm -hmm. bootcamp would be best for a beginner slash intermediate user. Yeah. Um, I would say I'm in between those two. Um, I, I find that most people that are in between beginner and intermediate users, mm-hmm. even though they, they already understand a lot of the concepts behind AppSheet Essentials, which is our more beginner um, bootcamp, we, we find that a lot of times whenever you self-learn or whenever you kind of scrap together learning from YouTube, mm-hmm. you don't really, you kind of miss out on some concepts. You kind of miss out on why things are important or some like really fundamental things yeah. that are beneficial to understand mm-hmm. um, as a app developer with an app sheet. Mm-hmm. And so I would definitely suggest app sheet essentials first, mm-hmm. just because I think that that really builds a very strong foundation mm-hmm. for you to go into the other boot camp or to go into our other on demand content where your app where your data is normalized, your data is set up in a structure that is beneficial for AppSheet and takes utilizes the full capabilities of AppSheet. Whereas if you don't have that foundation, it's really hard to, in the future, you'll run into limitations where you can't use a lot of the features of AppSheet because your data isn't structured correctly. And so I think that even for somebody who um, is considered an intermediate, even... I wouldn't even say if, even if you're not even between beginner and intermediate, even if you're just are intermediate, 
I think there's tons of value behind the app sheet essentials. Yeah. As the first course, it really just gives you a great foundation Mm -hmm. to really hit the ground running with other things like expression mastery or on demand and templates and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I will say though, for, for right now, um, App, there's no app sheet essentials available for purchase. Um, and so if you're wondering, can I get into expression mastery and find the resources? Um, and is my, do I have the, the prerequisite skills to be able to like um, take advantage of this course? Um, I took this course as my first course here. Um, and at first I was like a little bit overwhelmed on what material um, the material was talking about and some of the concepts. Um, but it was a good experience to really understand um, what the full capabilities of AppSheet were. So you're going to you're going to learn, you know, the most advanced features in AppSheet when you take this course, um, as far as like expressions and how to build those um, the, the logic inside of AppSheet. You're going to get the database design. You're going to understand how to build those data structures and references. AppSheet Essentials is going to kind of break all those things down for you, but Expression Mastery is going to put them into action and, and into practice, um, especially with the um, with the logic side of AppSheet. Um, so um, unfortunately, AppSheet Essentials um, is not available for purchase anymore, um, but if you still wanted to take advantage of a live bootcamp with us, um, I would still recommend Expression Mastery um, because you will get to to ask those specific questions. Um, and you might be surprised that maybe your skill set is a little bit more advanced than just a beginner. Um, and then I saw somebody else say, um, can I make progress with the boot camps? For sure. <laughs> That's what they're designed for. Um, so these boot camps are all about helping you level up your app sheet skills. Um, and as we say, to upgrade your career um, or your company or your organization, because um, that's what that's what we do here. That's what we we care about you and your organization. Um, we want to see it grow, um, and we just love making apps and um, connecting with people. Um, and so these courses are geared towards you guys and helping you develop on the AppSheet platform. Um, that's why we do what we do because we we really want to empower um, citizen developers, um, just people who are employees of an organization or um, wanting to develop your skill set. Um, that's what these courses are designed for, um, to help you take advantage of a new tool, a new technology that's really changing the game and, um, and business processes in general. Um, I mentioned Ryan earlier. He revolutionized his whole um, organization with AppSheet. After he knew um, kind of the basic concepts of how to develop an app on AppSheet, um, he started receiving more clients because he was able to um, onboard them a lot more quickly with his AppSheet app. Um, so he was an engineer and he was able to create those business processes to take uh, field data. And he was um, collecting the data and organizing it and getting back to his clients a lot faster than um, other engineering firms because he had his AppSheet app. Um, they were no longer having to rely on spreadsheets out in the field or other outdated business processes. Um, so if that's you or if um, you have some business processes that need updating. Um, that's what these courses are geared towards so that you can um, land more clients um, and just get things done a lot more faster and more efficiently. Um, and then all while learning a new skill of AppSheet. So I have about 50 seconds left. Um, I did want to stay on for that time. If anybody had any more questions or Cam, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, not really. Um... Just love seeing everybody talking and hopefully that we're pointing each of them into the right direction. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, it was great um, seeing everybody here today and Cam, great job on that um, app demo and just showcasing um, some cool features in AppSheet. Um, really excited to meet with y'all. If you signed up for a tech talk, I will see you soon. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining the webinar this week. We'll see you next time, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Austin, for having me on. And thank you guys for joining the bootcamp as well. I really enjoyed it and appreciated all the questions you guys had. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you around.